Hi guys, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy and today we're talking about a new bank of sounds from UVI and it's called the PX Memory. It is a sample bank of sounds sampled. <laughs> it's a bank of samples from the Memory Moog. It was the last big piece to be released in 82, if I'm not mistaken, just before the revolution of digital synthesizers like the DX7 and D50, which basically put all the analog aside after that because everybody wanted the future, which was digital at that time. So the memory Moog was uh, um, not made in so many units, about like a little bit more than 100 copies were released and a lot of problems came with these devices. They were not that stable. Some of the panel knobs were not working the way it should be. And some of the quality of the output were not the way people expected. So basically it was not a big hit. It still is a unique, almost, piece of gear. But what happened is that many years later, a fan uh, from Lintronics, if I'm not mistaken, a synthesizer repair shop based in Germany, uh, they decided to say, well, let's do honor to the memory Moog and fix it. So they started modifying. It was a long work of six years to change um, the layout, the way the knobs would react, that the fact that the knobs would send information, media information, um, that the quality of the output would be the right one. This, the, you know, the noise in it would be would d disappear, and they would tune it so it stays tuned. So they did a lot of modification on it and that modification is called the L-A-M-M -M modification, the LAM if you want. And this is one of the device that they sampled. So they sampled that modified version that makes it pristine, stable, high quality and reactive the way I think it was meant to be when, when they was first released. Again, not a lot of unit were sold, not a lot of unit exist, and not a, and even less than that have been modified this way. So UVI took one of them and started to sample, create sound, make many different cool sound with it, sample them as raw source, and then put them into the UVI workstation sampler playback um, software. And then you've got great original samples recorded straight from these devices. Plus, you have great um, ways to control it if you want to. So let's go through that. I'll explain a tour of the synthesis in it, and then we'll listen to the sound themselves, the presets, to give you an idea of what you can do with that. And if it fits your bill, then you should watch it. Actually, it's, it's not that costly right now. There's a promo, but I think normal price would be around uh, 50 or 60 uh, US dollars. So it's not a big, big price if the sound is the one you're looking for. So let's actually put headphones for this one. We'll start with a guided tour of the whole interface, the synthesis and all the options of the synthesis itself. Then we'll go through presets. So you'll have a good idea of how you know it sounds and if you can actually use it for your projects. So they decided to do different things. First of all, if you look at the bank itself, you have the PX memory, you've got memory basics, no effects. So these are clean sounds, um, very clean and simple. You've got animated classic ARP. So you've got these three, one animated, missed, um, and one key. These are all um, animated in the way that they're either using the step sequencer um, or some type of, of you know, modulation makes it move a lot. So we'll go through them after. And then you've got just sounds in groups of, you know, types of sound, bass, bell, brass, effects, keys, lead, organ, pads, pluck, polysynth, and string and sweeps. Okay, so let's start with memory basic no effects. Um, in it basic, for example, click on it, and you're gonna load a lot of stuff. So what you have here, So these are the raw samples. And then you have here, when you click on it, these are again the samples. So what they actually, you know, 
Right now I'm listening just to layer A, so this one here. So you get A and B, so two samples. And to be honest, it's not just one sample, because they probably sample a lot of them at different keys and different section, different velocities. Maybe not velocities. So you have this here. Uh, if you want to take another one, right away you're changing the sound of it because you're using uh, the raw. It's like changing oscillators in, in, in a way. And because we're only listening to A, the second one here, program two, is not active. We don't, we don't hear it. Okay, if you click on it and you move it, it's still not going to change anything until you turn this thing on. Now you hear the two of them. Now all the evolution of the sound that we hear, wow, and the ding that stops with the bell, these are envelopes that are part of the recording. So you cannot change that. They're recorded this way because right now what we're changing are just the oscillator evolution, the sample that was recorded. If you look at the envelope here, we've got attack, decay, sustain, release. Well, these four are in the neutral mode, so they're not being active. You know, zero attack, zero decay, maximum sustain, a little bit of release. So it's not changing anything. And if you look at um, the filter, you have the same thing. Attack, decay, sustain, release, it's inactive. You know, it's at the neutral section. And the frequency of the cutoff point of the, the, the filter is open to the maximum. There's no resonance. There's no depth. It's not used at all. So we really hear the oscillators. Wow. Opening up. That's not a filter in the synth. That's a sim the sample of the evolution of the filter envelope. Okay? So that has to be clear because if you say, well, I want to change that, you can, but you cannot open it because it was recorded while it was closing, and that's part of the recording. That's how it is. Um, so these are the, I mean, the list here is just huge. These are all waveform. We've got the classic waveform, like the raw waveform you can have. And then you can change the volume. Okay, so that window is very simple. You basically load the sample you want. Uh, you decide the volume of each, depending. You can have them left and right, or in this case, they're not. They're just together. They can be unison, off, or lamb. So if you put lamb, you put lamb, you get this like very loud sound for me. Unison is on. You can assign the velocity to the attack. So if you assign this, and then... See? So the velocity is now affecting the amplitude. You have a filter, you've got no filter, a low pass, bend pass, and high pass, and that's it. You don't have a, a control over the slope itself, um, and that's it. Now, you have this little thing here that's interesting. You've got A, B, A, and B. So, do you want the combination of A and B going through the filter, or you just want A to go through the filter? So, if I'm cutting, I'm cutting, the filter is only affecting A. If I put it B, now it's only, I can have separate filters. And I can have this one. So I can control two different filters. So that's pretty awesome. You have them separate. Or C is basically you control the two at the same time. Now you have this. This is, in my case, it's mono. This is in poly mode, but mono. So again, you can have A or B separate. You can have one mono, one polyphonic. Let's say we have this poly, so. So you only have one of the B because it's monophonic, but you can have many of the A because it's polyphonic. Okay? And if you put C, well. And then you get the depth and the time for the glide, probably, my guess. That's it, the glide. 
and how much so it's nothing here so glide for polyphonic keys which kind of always bizarre so no glide okay so this is for the voicing you get the pitch you can just higher the pitch lower the pitch okay very simple and semitone double tap and then you enter the value if you want it to be exactly then we've got the stereo so you have this spread only works if you play it you know while you keep your finger it will not work so you need to release and play again the tuning well it's gonna work if you put it in unison so how much unison you want color is well make it sound like it's a little bit different you know and probably so it's again it's probably some random uh, detuning a little bit fine tuning okay then you get the vibrato uh, controlled by the mud wheel Okay, you get the rate, of course, if you want it to be. You get the tremolo, same logic, and you get the filter. Um, then the filter could be assigned to the modulation wheel, so you can mod it or not. So, kind of one way to play. So, these are just like cool stuff you want to have, of course. Off for now, let's go to mod window. And now, this again, keep in mind, we're not recreating the original synth in this window at all. You're taking the sample from it. You don't need to learn it. Everything that you see here is most of the feature you see in every workstation banks of UVI. They kind of recreate or use these different options uh, of synthesis and modulation and step modulator and, and, and arpeggiator. They're all part of this synth um, workstation or the Falcon. So they're just packaged in a way that makes it look and feel more natural for the sound that you just bought. But the, the big job is coming from the sampling job itself. So that's the LFO here. I want the LFO to be sent to let's say, volume, let's say, of the B. And you want it to be assigned to LFO the A, but you don't hear that too much. Okay, LFO for the B. Oh, we do hear it. steps now. So what you hear now is the filter of uh, the workstation not of a sample. So it's that's what it becomes interesting is you have the original raw sound that was sampled and then you can actually use the step sequencer to create movement in the filter that is the one from Workstation or Falcon if you have Falcon. That's it. So uh, next step, you've got the effects. So again, everything that we talked about about UVI, if you look at other videos that I talked about the UVI, everything that you see here is there. EQ, Drive, Taurus, um, basically, it's a chorus pedal, um, ensemble, phaser, delay, and spark verb. They're all there for everything that UVI is offering. It's always there. It's part of the, you know, the synthesis engine, so it's always there. And you've got the ARP, uh, the arpeggiator that is there. So this one, if you use it, so 
So you hear, so this one is only on the first one, and this one is only on the second one. Uh, just a reminder, like these link here, if you don't know what they do, look here. There's, that's the step at the top, step, this is the velocity. So what's going to control, let's say you want to affect it to, uh, basically it's a note, so the velocity of the notes. You want the tie these notes, so these are the ties. And semitone, so if you put plus 24, let's say plus 24 in this one. So this is the panning, and this is the gate, the length of each note. Whatever. And then if you want a preset, you've got these. just by taking the, the init sound. So you can really use this if you want to create, there's still a lot of power in it to create your own sounds easily. Because, I mean, you just have the raw samples to work with, but the entire synthesis you have in there is the one you see in every UVI interface. Um, and it's still very, you know, not just potent, it's really good. It really is a cool thing. So this is the interface. This is how you're going to play with it and create your own stuff. Keep in mind that you can also go a little bit further. You go edit, you've got these effects that are part of the internal effects, but you see them from the other window. When you're in this window, when you're into effects here, these are basically the effects we just looked. So these are just like really... actually go into the animated just for the fun of it see that these they play a lot with it's very moody I like that name popcorn <laughs> So these actually are just like these moving arpeggiator. Yeah, they're just like great. This is, and you see the two arpeggiator here. So one of them is mostly a noise. The one is playing back a note. Melody. Okay. I won't play all of them because it's just like a lot of them. I have a pool. It's in French, because UVI is a French company. I have piscine. <laughs> Summertime. So 
there's a lot of them. Uh, I'm not gonna play all of them because there's just this is just for the ARP Classic. You got miscellaneous. Let's just try a couple a couple of them. So if you listen correctly, one of them is just like the one is the There's effects on this, probably sure. Yeah, delay and sample drive. There's step modulator. And you got the ARP here. That's the thing you hear. Okay, so it works. Try another one just to see what they have. Memotronic. I'm guessing a lot of movement with the ARP and the mod. That's it. Okay, so a lot of these different ones are like that. There's also animated with one key, so you just press one key and every aggression. Ah, I gotta click on this. Okay. I know I like to listen to these ones, but I'm I'm not sure that I mean because it's almost a song, you know, it's almost a whole pattern. You can easily say, well, that's all. And it's going to be hard to manage after that, but it can give you ideas and trigger, and you know it can do that sound, so it's really... It sounds, I mean, it shows you what it can do sound-wise. So let's actually go back here and try bass, okay? We have bass with sequence in this case. There's a lot of sequence here. Okay, there's different ways to do it. It's interesting. You've got this uh, velocity switching that goes between the uh, very like, clear one and aggressive, and then the muffled one that plays at the back. Okay, so you got this like low note going, and this kind of rhythm playing. It's a cool thing. So there's a lot of arpeggiator. I thought it was less than that. But then again, if you say, well, I don't want it, turn it off and then. So it becomes a non-sequenced sound you can use. <laughs> that I like. Fat and full, that's like you expect a Moog to sound. Pretty cool. Okay. to play, but it's a pretty cool. I really 
noteworthy if you just play it and you get that wow coming. Really is a cool thing. You hear all that movement in the back. You have to need the headphone. You hear that at the front and at the back you hear the Just like a really, I like this. This one is really aggressive and. Again, if the ARP is not your taste, to your taste, you turn it off and you get. So you can easily, you know, re recuperate the sound that is a in a ARP version. For it. it just sounds massive. I like that sound. The multi saw. Too low. That's cool. responsive for this okay let's I'm not gonna play all of them like I said earlier let's actually try to go um, brass because everybody likes brass and if you like analog stuff okay beta beta funky man No, but I mean, let's go. There's, you get the. Another nice triple saw. It's basically two of them. You get the triple saw, which is a sample of three sawtooth, and the other part of brass, which is another sample. So it's like playing two memory mog at the same time. So that's why it's so massive. That's pretty cool. So it's not just like good samples, it's also a great programming that you have. So these are playable. Now I like it. Let's actually go leads, see what we have here. Large Retro 2. Okay. Not my cup of tea, but... Actually, it's pretty playable. That's like, I like it. Okay, like it.
like it. Okay, again. Funky Town, this one. Okay. What else do we have? Let's try uh, Snap Dog. What is that? It's like from Snoop Dogg? Again, I like these sounds. They're really, I like aggressive sounds. So, but, but I like everything. So that's stereophonic. One sound each side. Sounds a bit weird, but I mean, it's just a question of. Uh, you want to play it? Okay, it works well. And the reverb, I mean, presets in this have just like high quality sounds plus high quality reverbs and all the effects are really cool. Uh, let's try, uh, I don't know, keys, for example. Let's try something. Do we have anything here that we like? I think we will. That's a cool one. Something's in it. Like these little details are really nice. Nice, uh, oh, digital, but it's just digital sounding. Okay. Well, let's try other sounds now. Do we have like pluck, pluck, please, synth, strings? Let's try strings. We've got the high emotions. Sounds good. Sound like lush. Okay, like it also. That's in strings. It's just Really 
I like these little details that when you hold the keys, you get these little things coming out the back and coming in and in and out. So it's really cool. Okay. And let's try sweeps. Because a good synth analog with a mo must have. If you don't have that, you don't have an analog synth. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's so icy. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's just like high, sad, icy, cold. Again, it's a question of taste and what style of music you're doing, what type of sound you're looking for. I love the way UVI approach this and all of their synthesizers. They have great sounds right off the bat. They're sampling great raw sources and they program them in a way that it's really useful. They're playable. And if you like the sound, you just buy a great pack of sound without needing to first <laughs> buy a memory Moog, which is going to be <laughs> really difficult to do. And second, learn how to program it and take the time to do that. And then maintaining it in real good condition. So this is quicker, this is cheaper, and this is stable, and this is available. <laughs> so, so that's it, guys. Stay safe. In Montreal, we're still in kind of lockdown. Uh, we have a curfew now. So um, I just bought a new synth and I'm making music. That's what I do. So I suggest you do the same. Stay home, stay safe, make more music. Cheers, guys.